Upon hearing about the apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I felt a strong desire to go there. It was not a wish to get assurance about the authenticity of the apparitions, nor to experience something extraordinary, or even to be healed from some sort of illness. Rather, it was a need for peace within my soul. I received the Catholic faith as an inheritance from my parents, as well as a solid formation in the Christian way of life. But nevertheless, there were many questions that, as far as I was concerned, were still left unanswered. Most people who visit want to climb both hills, not in the expectation of having visions or experiencing something extraordinary, but rather to manifest externally to themselves and to God their inner desire to come closer to Him, to rise above earthly attachments and to strive for the sense of the everlasting. Many of them bear witness to experiencing complete conversion on one of the hills. In an inexplicable way, they realize how much God loves them, and many experience deep inner repentance for everything that used to separate them from God. This is where deep inner joy and peace begins. Many also experience meditative prayer for the first time in their lives, there on the hill. It is hard not to feel a deep need for confession upon descending from the hills. The mere decision to change one's life brings about deep repentance for committing sin and a longing for sacramental absolution. I have seen people ready to wait for a couple of hours calmly standing in line for confession. They put aside a few days of their lives just for God, and waiting in line only gives them an opportunity for quality preparation. While visiting Medjugorje for the first time, I was fascinated by the incredible patience of the priests conducting confessions. They are not only ready to hear about the sins of the people, but also to offer great compassion for the pain born in their hearts. A person attending confession is given not only absolution from sin, but also solace and a prayer of faith through which God heals human souls. Forgot 
Ljudi su zaboravili na duha. Rekao je da se približavamo kraju zadnjih vremena. Međugorje je uvijek filled with young people. The young are the future of the church. They are future fathers and mothers, future priests, monks and nuns. Medjugorje gathers them in the experience of unity, to realize they are not alone, and to help them appreciate the true value of the church. Through love for the church, and through devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the young become a stronghold for Christ's Catholic Church. Medjugorje also organizes many different kinds of spiritual seminars and lectures in their favor. Vi devo dire che la comunità non ha solo le finestre e le porte aperte. Treba vam reći da zajednica nema samo vrata i prozore otvorene. Ma abbiamo il cuore aperto. Ali je naša srca otvorena. So many services in so many different languages. Many are the Catholics who felt the joy of Mass for the first time only in Medjugorje. <laughs> On to čini kao pravi otac nebeski. Zato molimo puni povjerenja, znajući da On, Bog, zna točno što nam treba u životu. Potrebno ste i jesice mi, sam pitice turno, Mass in this holy place is not just a duty to be carried out, not just an act of honoring God, but it is an encounter with the living God, unison in His Son's sacrifice, offering of one's own life, food for eternal life. Mass in Medjugorje is a real joy. It seems as if the pilgrimage to Medjugorje starts with this statue. Medjugorje is a gift from heaven above and we become very aware that we should offer gratitude for this gift to Our Lady. Medjugorje is a gift of peace and therefore Our Lady is to be called the Queen of Peace. We surrender ourselves to her in front of this statue in order to be brought to God. We feel as if she is letting us inside her home in Nazareth 
and presenting us to her son as children lost along life's path with no parents of our own. While being in front of the statue, it is as if Our Lady fills us with trust that her son will bring us further along the journey in order for us to attain absolute peace in our soul. But the statue is also a place where people can acquire a deeper devotion to Our Lady and avail of her powerful intercession. Friday evenings are reserved for veneration of the cross. It is an act of gratitude for our redemption and also a gesture of uniting our own sufferings with those of Christ. It is a search for the meaning and purpose of the cross. This purpose undoubtedly exists and a person can find it and receive it here in Medjugorje as an extraordinary gift. Through adoration of the cross, we bow down to the absolute greatness of God's love for us. God becomes extremely close to us because we can feel that He understands our sufferings. Many become aware of the fact that suffering can become a source of extraordinary spiritual joy when it is seen as having a purpose within God's plan of salvation. True worshippers bow down to God in truth and spirit. The truth is that the living Christ is truly present in the sanctified host. The Holy Spirit reveals this truth to us in a special way. We are given the ability of perceiving the body of Christ in the sanctified host through the eyes of the heart. When in adoration, we come into the presence of the living Jesus. According to his own words in scripture, he is always present among those gathered in his name. And what better way to be gathered than in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament? Abiding Jesus' presence for an hour and letting his invisible hand touch us with his divine love brings great tranquility to the soul. For numerous pilgrims, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament opens up the eyes of the heart to the fact that the Eucharist is the best means of sanctification. Union with the body of Christ brings us to a deeper awareness of Christ's omnipresence and his loving shepherding of those who trust in him. I came to Medjugorje in order to experience the love of God. I believed in God, but still I didn't have the experience of his great love. I was there for three days and I didn't see any kind of miracle. I had not met any of the visionaries, and I hadn't experienced anything that I could describe as being extraordinary. But at the end of my visit, I did experience the most important thing of all, God himself. 
I experienced his presence in the pilgrims that came to look for him. I experienced their serenity. It is not possible to come to Medjugorje and not to be able to see the peace within the hearts of people who come here. More importantly, a few days upon my return home, I became aware of this same peace still being present inside me. My life was completely changed and I started praying out of sheer joy. I spent every moment of my spare time pondering God. Praying the Rosary brought a new inflow of ease to my soul. I can truly say that I started life anew in Medjugorje. Ever since, I come to Medjugorje not just to experience God, but to take part in heavenly joy. Everything that God wants to offer me, I can receive within my own parish. But the joy of meeting so many people from all over the world, flocking to this holy place, is something that enriches me immensely every time I come here. Medjugorje is a place of prayer, of personal encounter with the living God. But Medjugorje is also a place of Christian joy. Such sincere joyfulness of believers during Mass celebrations, adorations of the Blessed Sacrament, venerations of the Cross, piousness and devotion during the ways of the Cross, rosary prayers, different forms of seminars and lectures, meetings of youth and priests from all over the world, leave none aloof. Millions of people come to Medjugorje and many return home completely transformed. Many visit again and bring others in order for them to share the same experience. This film gives only a modest insight into Medjugorje and into what takes place here and it is my own little way of saying thanks to God for the immeasurable wealth of graces I have found here. Jesus said. 